Welcome, uh, Mark Cleggorn here for the Photographer Academy. We're in studio, uh, we're shooting Ellie, amazing little dancer, and uh, we're gonna do some kind of speed light photography for you. We're gonna start with kind of the, um, kind of the, the usual way for me. In other words, we're gonna be using a soft box, we're using separation lights, we are running through the master uh, or kind of uh, con com uh, commander and slave modes, okay? So we're working in a, wi a wireless with speed light anyway. So I'm not sure if you can see, but we've got one up in the sky and we've got two kind of raw flashes off to the side. Um, at the end, we're gonna do a bit of a strobosonic kind of thing as well. I, I've never really mastered it, to be honest. Uh, you know, it's just one of those things that I'm sure somebody somewhere has some amazing images for it, but I, I've never really created great images. But we'll have a go live, all right? So I don't mind to try things as long as you try things as well. That's the kind of the key thing. Uh, and remember, if you're a photographer Academy bed, uh, we have photo critiques twice a month, so you can send all your strobosonic images and say, this is how you do it, Clegorn, all right? But I just thought, because it's a technique I don't do all the time, let's have a little go live and see if we can get some kind of image out of it. Uh, what else do we need to talk? Questions? Uh, we're live, so obviously if you want to get questions in, kind of do it anyway. Right. L, I think we just get up onto uh, um, uh, the black, if that's okay with you. So turn around towards there. Let's keep there. Okay, so let's um, switch on and just make sure that none of our flashes have gone to sleep. So I'm just going to take a, a quick image. Um, it's showing red, then it goes green kind of it kind of shows that it's all going so let's kind of just see the test shot anyway it's cropping you off at the head l so i do apologize yeah i will go and actually do a proper shot but i wanted to make sure that the uh speed lights hadn't gone to sleep first all right so let's just go in and compose the shot first zoom back to the touch mark we're tether tools um taking it into the laptop into capture one okay let's do the shot okay so let's go down so uh, we've got three speed lights running, uh, one in the soft, the soft box, two as the separation lights. We're using this kind of raw flash to give us some kind of flare uh, kind of across the whole image. But I definitely want to actually change this image a little bit and kind of have the light coming down from above. But before I do that, let's kind of look at what the different lights are doing. L, just try and turn the body that way a little bit, a little bit more and do the same thing just around to here. That's good, let's do the same thing a minute. Okay, so that's all three lights, as we just saw. Um, on the master here on the top, I can control what is on, what is off. So I'm just gonna press group, and I'm gonna go down to B, which is my left-hand corner flash, yep. And I'm gonna just switch it off, it's just pressing a button. Um, then I'm gonna come down to C, I'm gonna press the same thing up off. So now I should get is just the one light. Ready, Al? Just lower the chin a little bit more, darling, it's gorgeous. Okay, so that is just my softbox light what is kind of creating the, the real drama within the image. Let's go with just hands on here. Let's bring this one foot towards me in a real stance. Just look off towards that direction a little bit more for me. Okay, I'm not shooting the feet, but it all starts from the feet, every pose and things ready. Straight away, we've got great images. If you turn the body that way, Ellie, for me, if you can, darling, both full, 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 and almost stretch back into this light. So lean back into it, that's gorgeous. I might lose your arms, but let's have a little look. So we've got all the light coming in from this direction. Um, so we, we, we know that with the big light, uh, remember a speed light by its own design is trying to get big and all we're doing is softening that light down. Let's go back and reverse this now. So back into groups and I'm just gonna switch C back on uh, L. We're gonna go back to that same uh, pose. In fact, uh, the first pose we did back to me. Let me just go to C, C is on, B is on. A is off, so this is kind of a near silhouette look, really going down for me again, that's lovely, relax. Um, so this is all the light coming in from behind. What I have done is actually I've taken down the amount of flash coming from B and C, that's the one at, uh, B is the 11 o'clock light, and uh, basically C is the one o'clock light, and I've taken them down to kind of th uh, three stops uh, less than the actual key, so it kind of gives us that expo exposure. But we're working at 1 60th of a sec second at 5.6. 5, 5 uh, let's do the same thing. Let's turn the body to the side, Al. More, 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 more. And let's do a kind of a leaning back, but there's your light, so don't look at me at all. Look over towards there if you can. Okay, one, two, three, go. It's lovely, relax. And let's do the same thing the other way for me, exactly the same pose, one, two, three, go. 
excellent relax. So you can see what we've got is those speed lights coming in uh, for our separation light looks really, really nice. In fact, I prefer that image, just it might be a slight difference in the height of the light, positioning and so on, but it's really nice within the pose. So um, instantly we've got a, a pretty cool set setup there. You might not like the, um, as far as the flare is concerned, um, but we could always control that with some uh, honeycomb grids or whatever. Um, I'm just gonna bring the main light down for a minute, kind of bring it off set, and then I'm gonna swap it onto the boom arm. The boom arm that we use is uh, pretty much, it's a poly um, stand in fact. It collapses into a little sports car if you're lucky enough to be able to get out of one. I, my physique anymore I'll, <laughs> will not allow to get me out of a, sport, a sports car in any way. Let's just fix this in. And what we really want is just sub, something that is going to be able to kind of, uh, let's drop this down just a little bit more. So in the poly, I want it to actually point almost backwards. Let's tighten that up. Uh, you might see on the flash setups that we've got um, a battery pack on each flash. And the reason we're doing that is so we've got a quicker re recharge. And basically the batteries, oh, it's my legs. The batteries within the flash are basically just powering the electronics. Right, there we go. So this is gonna be like a street light effect. I wrecked the black background. The other one I said, just don't get it mucky or whatever it is, it's wrecked anyway. Um, so let's kind of just see what this light is doing. So the same thing. I'm going to pre pretty much, I think, bring it in from behind just a little bit more. But let's do the first test shot. So I'm only interested now in the kind of the group, um, which is A, which is above, yeah? So I just want to switch, uh, click this button on to switch it on. I'm going to switch the other ones off. So I dial down to B, press the button to go off, dial down to C, switch that one to off as well. Let's do the same thing. So come to me a touch more, Al. That's it. Let's do here and losing the faceless kind of head. So going down a little bit more for me, that's lovely. Relax. Um, so this is just the light from above and it's a kind of a street light effect. I love it. A much, much more dra a drama. Let's uh, bring it in now. I'm just gonna throw the black background away, that's it, you know? I am a bit tight and I like to kind of maximize our use out of things. I'll give it to a school. They can use it for, yeah, whatever. Anyway, let's do the same pose for me. That's gorgeous there. I've had too much caffeine today, can you tell? Stop smiling. It's supposed to be a fine art level. What are you doing, Al? Okay, um, right, let's do it again. I really like it, okay? And again, lower the chin more, darling. Separate the hands just a touch. Whoa, that's lovely. Uh, come up to me just a fraction. That's lovely. That'll block some of the light. Still kind of will give us the light onto the uh, hands. It's lovely. Come up to me a little bit more. So the further L comes to me, the less light is going to actually be onto the face. Let me just focus correctly. One sec. Keep it. Relax. Yeah, it's nice. So we can see the different positions, how we're getting this kind of great image uh, really kind of coming through. Um, height of light, if, if you're struggling in a studio space, uh, for the first pretty much nine years, I could touch the, stu uh, the studio in the portrait studio, the, ce uh, the ceiling like that. So I soon learned to actually kneel the client down or sit, or sit the client down. When we moved studio space, I gained about another foot and a half. Metric, that's half a meter. Hey, look at me coming up to speed. Uh, about half a me meter. Um, but basically then when we built the studio, when I retired in the grounds of the house, uh, we, we kind of gained a, you know, 11, 12 feet ceil a ceiling space. In, in the, stu uh, the studio that we've converted here now, again, it's an old church, so we've got a huge dance wall. It's the only thing that's never touched. You can't see it's that way, but it's a pure white wall. It's great for kind of a stage effect and everything else with it. So yeah, I think that's a really, really great kind of start to a shoot. So um, have I done anything te technical? I chose an aperture, I chose a lens, I've put a flash up, it's in automatic mode, the lights from behind are now switched off a little bit, so have I done anything technical? I really 
The only thing I've done is cho uh, uh, really chosen the position of my key light, which has given me the drama. That, that's all I've done. Uh, I can't take any kind of credit for the correct exposure or anything else because we're in TTL mode. When we're not in TTL mode and I've set it up in a manual way, then obviously I can take all the credit because I've composed it all. Right, before we kind of change this fully, I really do like it. I'm just going to do a few more in a minute uh, before I forget. Okay, L, let's just lower down the chin a lot more, darling. Keep it, and again, lower chin more. Let's turn the uh, body around towards there for me. More, 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 more. That's lovely. And with the head looking down towards there for me fully. It's gorgeous. Keep it. Raise the chin up high and look high now. That's lovely. Turn the nose away from me a little bit more. Eyes just around towards the nose and now look higher. Lower the chin down fully now. Eyes down lower as well. Fully. It's lovely. Okay. Let's just do a quick dagger. I mean, just tying up your lace. Hang on a minute. Oh, I've got to get on the floor. I'm too... Don't now. Just because I'm an old man doesn't mean you can laugh at him. Well, it does, in fact. I would as well, can I? Okay, let's do a, a quick test. Let's do a Degas by tying up the lace me. That's lovely. It's there. Keep it. I've even got a shot of you laughing at me now. I'm going to haunt you with that image forever. Okay, let's do the same pose the other way. That's it. Doing the same for me again. Keep it. So let me lower the chin more, darling. Okay, so let's uh, add some separation light in. That will kind of really help. Uh, before we uh, fully do it, let's just go back to my group again. We'll switch C back on. Uh, in fact, I lied. We'll switch C off and we'll switch B on. So this is just going to be one of the lights coming in from behind. Let's do it again, Elsa. Look. Could you step that way a fraction? That just a little bit, yeah. Let's step again. Okay, let's do it, keep it. Quick test, stay there for me. Um, I want that negative space around, that's gorgeous there. Do, do, do it again, do it again, do it again. And again, it's lovely. I'm gonna just put that other light on again. You're fit enough, you can stay there. How do dancers keep going? That's what I wanna know in life. How do you have the energy? What do you eat, just junk? Or is it proper food? They put in seeds on my salad at lunchtime now. That is not good for any old man. I'm telling you now. Okay, let's do it. Quick test. One second. I'm just getting the focus point. There you go. So this is all three lights going off now. Double, se double separation. Okay, let's stand up again, L. Let's pop uh, both hands on to hip, I think. Turn the body this way and the feet that way. More, more, more. And just lean the head to me, a little bit arrogance. That's lovely, it's there. Lean the head a little bit more, darling. That's lovely. Lower the chin a little bit. Eyes to here. Eyes away and the head away again. And let's finish off with that last pose, what we just did, but we'll go up on point, yeah? So looking down. Again, down. Sorry, darling. Okay. Out of practice. Down. Relax. Good, okay. Um, yeah, it's nice. You know, we, we kind of began off with a shot. Remember, if you're just joining us live, get your questions in. If you didn't see the first shot, um, I'm not going to put it back on its stand again, but really what we're doing is this uh, kind of fine art image. Let's do that one. And then we'll just go back into switching just the group above. One second, I uh, C is off. B is off. Okay, again, again for me. Let's do, 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 do. Lower the chin more. A little bit more of the open of the fingers. Twist the hips around towards the windows. It's lovely. Keep it. Head around towards me more. Turn the hands to me a touch more. Lean the head onto the left ear. Looking down again though. More. Stop the smiling. It's fine art, Al. Stop it. You're supposed to look miserable and, and kind of like, you know, the Mona Lisa and all that kind of thing with it. And things. Okay, let's do it. Lower the chin again, darling. You're almost serious. <laughs> I, I like it. I, I like it. Right, get off stage for a minute, you. Um, okay, so um, we've done the basic. Any questions there, Brandon, that anybody wants me to answer before we kind of go on? Um, information about your boom stand. Oh, okay, it's a poly stand. I don't even think it's being made anymore. Um, it's technically about 15 years old. Um, originally, Ellingcrom in the UK were importing them, um, 
but it literally is a simple boom. Um, and as I said, it collapses into a, sport, a sports car. These legs come up. I, I showed you the other day, Brandon, didn't I, how it all collapses down, and it, it kind of all gets down to a piece about that wide and about that tall, and that's it. Um, so it can fit pretty much anywhere, but uh, no, that's it. Poly stand, it was called. Um, you can have a look around and things, really, um, but it's one of those great bits of kit that you never want to get rid of. Um, anything else there, Brand? Speedlight, good question. Um, I'm using the third party Yongnu. So it's a Canon based uh, flash. Uh, I'm sure they make them for other camera, uh, the cameras, but because I shoot Canon, um, basically I've got all the speedlight to do with that. And I just felt that the Canon speedlights are so overrated in price. As soon as a third par party camera, uh, uh, flash company began to actually produce stuff. You know, in the good old days, Met's flash was the best flash. It was the o only flash. Then comes along digital photography and basically the use of TTL and all that automation. And basically that's where um, I moved over to Canon's own flash then. Um, but we're talking primitive stuff, yeah? And then they kind of allowed you to talk master and commander in infrared. So I'm using uh, the 600 series now, which is wi uh, wireless. It means that pretty much I can hide them around a corner a long way away and the flash is gonna fire. So um, to cut the long story short, I'm using a Yongnu. I think that's how you say it, I don't know, yeah? Uh, Yongnu, Yongnu, anyway. Uh, but it's something like the 600, um, RT2s, there we go, even Brandon knows about it now, kind of thing with it. Anything else? That's it. Good. Okay, um, let's do, uh, do something I don't usually do. Let's try Strobosonic, shall we? Uh, and we'll just... Uh, I did do a test shot beforehand, and it didn't look very good, all right? So I'll be honest about that. But let's try and do it, and then you can kind of criticise the hell out of me, but at least we've tried. I always believe at the end of any session, you should have a bit of fun. We did it last week, in fact, with one of Ellie's friends, uh, Natalia, and uh, again, I'm not sure if you checked out the stills of it yet, but they were amazing. Um, but anyway, shut up, Mark, get on, uh, get on with it. Right, so I'm just going to switch in my mode. Can you see this okay? Just say when you can see it. All right. So um, you can see that basically this is the YNE3 RT controller. I only know that because it says it on the top. And basically this is the master and it's telling all the others to kind of fire or not. If, if you miss what we were doing, um, as you can see here, the A light, that's the one in the sky that was, is basically in ETTL mode. So I had no kind of, I wasn't doing anything special at all. B uh, was the left-hand 11 o'clock light. Remember the clock and compass, I'm always at the six. Client is always in the middle, and then everything around them, we can say exactly where lights are going to go. So the B light is in the uh, uh, 11 o'clock position, and the C light, which is, as you can see, is switched off as well, is in the one o'clock position. Right, um, in mode, um, I want to go into strobosonic now. So we're basically going to keep pressing the modes until we get into mul mul multi um, let's kind of end where we began, uh, and basically I'll show, I'll show you it. Um, I suppose we've got to do a thing to say that if it's, if you're affected by strobe, is it? I don't know. I don't know. I thought we should say it. We're using strobe all the time, really. But if, if you get affected by flashing lights, don't watch this, because uh, we're going to go into a dark room. That's the only way to say it, isn't it, really, isn't it, yeah? Um, don't, uh, don't watch this, because we're going to have flashing lights. Strobosonic, uh, it's basically me, Alan, uh, Brandy, uh, go into a disco. Uh, it's not called a disco anymore. What's it called? Closed. No, clo nightclub, yeah. It's called closed, all right? Um, but a closed, ni a closed nightclub. So... Um, uh, you know, it's kind of where they kind of kill all the lights and then all of a sudden you've got that really flashing lights. And if you're really clever, you can see people kind of uh, move, uh, moving their hands and everybody looks like they're coming out of some kind of Indian movie. Uh, kind of, you know what I'm on about with all the kind of Bollywood. That was the word. Yeah. Right. Shut up, Clegg. Get, uh, get on with it. Look, I'm going to switch this one off uh, physically for a minute so we don't have any confu confusion what is going on. Um, I mentioned to you before that um, the lights are basically with a battery pack. Shall I roll this up so people can see it? 
Um, I'm, can you see that there? <clears throat> yeah, yeah um, it's a Lastalite Easy Box Opta 2. I know that because it says it on the side. And many moons ago, of course, I used to do a lot for uh, last light and things, really. Um, but um, what we've got up here is the kind of the uh, double mount mounting facility, if that's what I want. So I can mount two bead lights on here, okay? Um, but the most important part for me is a battery pack as well. This means pretty much all the power is being taken from the pack to charge the capacitor, rather than basically the flash using all the little AAs. Because uh, you know what happens to AAs, Braddon? Yeah, they run out, <laughs> just as you go live. Um, anyway, let's switch that off, um, and we'll get it out of shot. Right, um, I suppose before we kill all the lights, uh, let's just see the effect, shall we? Um, Ellie, do you want to come in, darling? I know it's going to look terrible, and I am going to apologise, but I'm sure we'll get some kind of image. Uh, I don't know what we're doing here. Yeah? This is a point of Mark Claybull making it up as he goes along. Um, okay, let's, um, with strobe, it's going to flash it, okay, mul multiple times. I need to change the shutter speed on the camera no matter what, and I'm going to have to kill the lights in studio anyway. So uh, I may as well kind of bring it down to a second-ish at 5.6. Pretty much I'm going to need to see it. Should we do the kind of the hand thing? Is that all right? Uh, start at the top and bring it down, I think. So we'll start there, let's just go for it. One, two, three, go. Okay, so I had a 10 and five, so we're just getting kind of five flashes going there in the time. You can see there's lots of things going on. Let's see where the hand position is at the top, please. And at the bottom, I need to zoom out just a touch more. And again at the top, please. There we go. I'm gonna focus on the face and switch it off then. Um, so basically the overexposure is because of all the ambient light within the room. Really, that's what's killing us. Um, so if I took the flash, uh, if I took the shot without any flash, uh, we basically, it's gonna be illuminated. Let's kill it, shall we? Let's kill the room lights first, which is not a lot, and then we're gonna kill your video lights. And now Ellie's in the dark. Okay, let's do it. One, two, three, go. Cool. Great, so it's a second long, F, F5.6, and I'm telling it to flash five times during its duration. Um, let's kind of um, up the uh, game of the actual hertz, in fact. Let's increase the amount for a minute. Let's go to 10 hertz, so we're 10 multiply by 10 hertz. Let's do it, go, go, go. Great, so we can see how it increased its amount of flashing per shot in that time anyway. So it's beginning to look more like that Michelangelo kind of David effect and things really. So it's pretty good. I think you're a bit slow. <laughs> That's the often I get to say that. Uh, anyway, okay, let's do it again, shall we? So one, two, three, go. Brilliant. So uh, again, we've got those images coming through. Uh, the camera does take a little bit more time to process anyway. Um, because obviously it's a second long, so the cameras take a little bit longer no matter what. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty good. Shall we uh, just, um, I'll put these lights out to the side and we'll kind of do it again, shall we? So, we'll keep with the 1010 a minute and then we'll increase it to say 2020. Um, so I'm just gonna move the other one. This flat uh, that's in place is just blocking some of the natural light uh, coming in from um, the big window to the right hand side and the biggest problem in a church there's big windows wherever you go okay so we're back into 1010 so um, we've put the lights now at nine o'clock and three o'clock okay Al, let's try it again shall we one two three go nice so, uh, we'll switch the room lights on in a minute, but let's get the shot first. Much better now, isn't it? It's much more defined and everything else with it. Um, what about if we do a bit of a hunch in a minute? I don't know if it's gonna look rubbish or not, but we'll try it. I like the amount of hands. You can't see it at all now, can you? <laughs> it's better than it was when we tested. Put out that with it, okay? So let's uh, increase it now and we'll go up in, mul in multiple, we'll get a 20. We're going to do the same thing, Ellie. Okay, you ready? Uh, one, two, three, go. 
So this is going to give us uh, a lot more hands. As you can see, a lot more kind of recording all the way through. But because Ellie is still, um, we're obviously, we're over lighting her as far as the exposure is concerned. And the hands are basically just getting some illumination. But uh, yeah, let's look right down the barrel of the lens. You, know, you, you can look straight at me. You're going to be blurred anyway kind of thing with it, all right? But let's kind of just shake the head a little bit as if you like you're telling me off as normal. All right, so let's start with that. Yeah, yeah, what's new there? Uh, let's start with the hands at the top, uh, head down low, looking straight into the barrel of the lens, um, shaking your head like I've done it wrong again. One, two, three, go. There you go. I'm used to that. Let's have a look again. Oh, I like it. Yes. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You weren't too slow then. Um, let's kind of up the multi again, shall we, and see if we can get some more. Not sure if we can. Uh, let's do it again once more. Last one. Remember, sh uh, shaking the head, looking down a little bit lower for me. Uh, one, two, three, go. Great. Yeah, I like it. It's very weird, isn't it? Let's do a spinny thing going across, shall we? Uh, remember, if you've got questions, get them in. Uh, should we just put on the light for a minute so they know that we're not actually, we have paid the electric bill. Just pop these ones on. There you go. All right. So um, if you miss where I was putting the lights, we've got this one pretty much come in at the uh, three o'clock position. Remember the clock? Ellie's in the middle. I'm just going to put it just behind, um, but it's still te uh, technically at the three. And I'm going to move the other light as well. Just a little bit. Oops. Okay. Let's uh, just fo focus again on the face. Make sure it's there. Uh, back into place, please, Al. Oh, please, can I have the light on so I can focus? Thanks. Okay, and off. No, 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 not you off. Him off. <laughs> right, let's do the hands again for one more, just because I've moved those lights. Ready? Top to bottom, shaking your head at me. One, two, three, go. Like it, a little bit lower with the head, really drop it down. Ready, one, two, three, go. Now just step to me just a fraction, a little bit more. Just refocus, that's what the red lines are coming up, yeah. Ready, one, two, three, go. Nice. We've got so much ambient light going on in here, we can't have total control anyway. Yeah, pretty good. Should we start that end and we'll just spin across towards there? Uh, do you want to just switch on some light so they can see a minute just where Ellie's going to be? Great. Uh, do it again. Elle, step that way a little bit. Focus. Can't focus. Switch it on with help. D, D, D. Okay, we're there. Right, let's go. Uh, let's do a walk, should we first? Moving the arms as we go kind of thing with it, yeah? So uh, we've got a second to do it. That's all. Lights off. And one, two, three, go. Great. What about if you stand in the middle and you almost start here and you just flow the hands across? Yeah? One, two, three, go. Nice. The last shot was the best one we did. <laughs> Anyways, do it again. Uh, just uh, come back a little bit, zoom out just a touch. One, two, three, go. Great. Let's do that walking across one again. Quite, it was pretty good. Try and almost hop, skip, and a jump, get quicker across, in other words, yeah? One, two, three, go. Great. And I'm going to do it again. You can start from that way and go across that way if you want. Uh, one, two, three, go. Nice. One more, I think. Let's just uh, change the color balance into tungsten, shall we? That'll give us a bit of a blue. One, two, three, go. Nice. Back down to the 10, at uh, the 10, 10. One, two, three, go. Nice. I like that one. I like the turn towards me. Lights on, please. Thank you, Ellie. Have a rest, darling. Brill. Wow, well, okay, that worked out better than I thought, to be fair. <laughs>
Um, again, uh, Strobosonic, it's kind of what you're going to use it for. Probably if you're dropping something or you want to kind of freeze something in that kind of disco kind of style as we were doing. Um, I think about the, is it da da David, I think it is, with the arms, is, isn't it, really, where the guy's still the nude and he's kind of doing it anyway, besides the point. But, uh, yeah, it's a bit of fun. We've never done that before live, I don't think, so it's pretty good. Right, questions, anything? Oh, yeah, okay. Um... They're not bad, Al. I'm waiting. What's the definition between fine art and a, poor, a portrait? I think um, uh, have a motion, uh, no, sorry, have a expressionless face, I think helps you straight away. Minimizing the lighting down and simplifying everything first of all doesn't mean you shouldn't then actually look at build, building a set or using props or whatever it is. But I would say, as far as the kind of the still life is concerned, if you think about what some of, you know, what I like, that's really what it's about, isn't it? So the kind of still life that I like is simplicity. It could be, uh, you know, a hundred year old knife, fork and spoon with a, car a carving knife on a plain piece of wood. For me, that's fine art. You might say, I don't like the wood, can I have it on white? That's fine art to you. Some of you might want it in a kind of a glitzy way with kind of patterns and kind of Photoshop to hell or whatever it is. Art is always in the, the beholder's eye, whether we like it or not. But I would say, um, for me, what I'm trying to do in the kind of the more the fine art level is to create more of a dramatic light. Um, that's what we did with the o overhead light, like the image we've got up on screen now. Um, I could really pretty much pop a, an old master kind of background behind it. So even with that one light, we could actually give it a little bit more definition. Um, should we do it, do you think? We got time or not really? Yeah, we've got time? Yeah. Okay, um, kind of bring in just a little bit of a textured background. So as a rule, the black background we've got is good. Um, but if we want some of the light to kind of really uh, bounce off it, then obviously black is just going to absorb things. Um, tell you what, do you want to grab the event background out? I'll just move the strobe out of shot for a minute. I'll kind of, yeah, I'll give you a hand if you want to, and then I'll... Um... Do you want a hand? I'm walking on the background. I'm walking on the background. It wasn't my idea. Um, so the first thing that we'd usually do is hire this up if we want the old mask. Can we take it right back towards that black? Is that right? Ready? Yeah. Little bend. Okay. Uh, pretty much we'd usually box it up, so kind of put it up in height. Uh, let's uh, bring my overhead light back in. Um, Let's switch on the battery first, then the flash. Any questions while we're fussing around with this now? Um, just for one, there's a bit of discussion about the speed lights. Yeah. Um, why did you choose the RGB and the Godox? Godox, yeah, yeah. Um, have you got any experience with that? Uh, no, no experience with Godox at all with it. Um, but like anything, it's a portable flash. On a commercial style of photography, we would tend to be using um, more the Elinchrom kind of portable flash, you know, the big battery packs, the 400 ELBs and the likes of. Um, so that's what I have had more experience with. Um, the, big, the big thing for me is why do I not use the Canon flash? I think it's overpriced for what it is. And... At times when they break, they always break. It doesn't matter what brand it is, especially if you drop it in the sea. <laughs> and I'd much prefer to drop a hundred quid Yongnu in the sea. And I'm not on about me. I'm on about an assist, assist, assistant or somebody on a workshop. They go, oops. Yeah, I look it at Brandon when I did that because we call it a, a Brandon anyway. But uh, he hasn't dropped anything in the sea yet as far as I know for me. Um, yeah, it's just disposable. It's cheap as well. You know, we just bought another one. Was it a hundred quid, 110 quid? Um, you know, and, and basically it depends how much you use this stuff, but getting going with three lights, three stands, 
the knuckle joints and everything else with it and things really. The battery packs are probably as more expensive today than the actual flashes are, but I do it because of, you know, A, affordability, and we can have loads of them in the bag compared to just like two or three of the kind of the uh, expensive uh, Canons. I think the Canons, when they first came out, the 600, 600s were about 600 quid. Uh, and there was always a joke uh, that basically whatever they, na uh, they named it as, that, that was the cost. <laughs> And I'm sure that's what they were using their equa equa equation. And as you can tell, I don't get sponsored by any camera company at all, so I can talk it, frankly. So for me, the young news do a really good job. Uh, Ellen Croms for me when I'm working on location in a professional. Fingers crossed we'll get out with Ellie and a few of the other dancers actually down on the beach uh, in spring and summer, um, where I like to actually shoot towards dusk and everything else with it and things, really. So, uh, yeah, I think that an answers it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. El, do you want to just come on while we're... Um, any more questions there at all? Um, the only other one is about the last Okay. Uh, yeah, where do I get the backgrounds from? The same place as you, you know. Um, the likes of the Flash said, the said, uh, Centre, uh, basically uh, UK, but I'm sure you'll get them on all other kind of good suppliers and things, really. But, um, yeah. Um, I might get you to kneel down in a minute. I know she hates me. Sorry. Yeah. In fact, why don't we go to a seated pose as if you're tying shoe? Um, that's it. Come over that way just a touch more. And let's get this foot flat and push the knee out and just as if you're going to tie. That's lovely. Okay, let's do that first. That'll just give me a little bit more height anyway. Let's have a little look at the shot straight out. So remember, we just set this up. Oh, I've left it on blue. I quite like that. Okay, so um, for me though, uh, what lens are we on? We're on the 50 here. Let's straight away kind of just change it to a 50 prime. Remember, a zoom and a prime lens kind of react in a totally diff a different way because of the, the way the configuration of the glass is. And, uh, I'd like to say I've encouraged more people to buy a prime lens uh, and a meter than anything else in life. Uh, because if I can encourage you to do that, then basically I've kind of done my job and getting away from a, me a medium zoom lens. Uh, okay, let's have a look. Okay, he's left the caps on again. Okay, let's do it. Okay, one sec. Make sure the focus is on. Quick test again, darling. Okay, so we can see where all that light is kind of coming from anyway. Let's uh, recompose. So I'm just going to lose my focus across, turn the camera around just a little bit more. Remember, you're seeing straight out of camera, uh, the camera. The only thing that we're doing here is we're shooting in a color mode, but we've actually put the color balance on to uh, tungsten. That's why we're getting the blue effect. L, if you come up to me just a touch to shuffle, Brilliant. Lean back onto the hands and just then looking off towards here for me. That's good. Just there. Let's do it. Quick test. So again, it's just about simplifying, but you can see already, I'm not sure if I like looking at the crotch. So if you just turn the feet around towards, there you go. It's better. And now lean into there. Just raise the chin up high and things. That's beautiful. Raise the chin up higher, looking up towards the light more now. Okay. So as it is, I think this foot can point towards me in a minute. Uh, I think it needs a little bit more space. Let's take a little bit of this light away. Let's bring it in from behind. Um, but you can see it instantly that at least we've got, in fact, I like that knee bent, just knee bent, that, no, no, that one. That's it, now bring this toe to me and point the toe. There you go. Leaning back more for me, raise the chin up more, Danny. Let's quick look. Yeah, love it. Let's come back a little bit. Um, I do like space around the Im image. I try and compose in camera. And if we're going to have negative space, use negative space. Um, it's pretty cool. It's lovely. And do up the lace me again. That's lovely. And lean in the head just towards the side. Twist the whole body now that way. So in an anti-clockwise, that's it. Do the same thing again. Point in the toe, stretching down for me. Uh, one second. Refocus. Focus in, relax. L, you're done, darling. Absolutely brilliant. Love it. Thank you. Great. So uh, again, thank you, darling. Really good. Nice to have uh, to have you back in my life. Um, 
she just finished all her dissertation, uh, dissertation for uni and everything else. Uh, yeah, you know, um, when we start, the, going back to the question is what makes kind of a fine art image? It has to be down to you. I'm sorry about that. I, I'm a firm believer I cannot teach creativity. I can possibly get you to look in a different direction or I can inspire you to look in a different direction, but it has to come from you. Uh, I mean, when we set up the Photographer Academy, what, 13 years, year, years ago now, all I really want, wanted to do was encourage better technique, consistent technique. Once you understood technique, forget technique. So you actually just do everything the way that you want to do. And, and just like all craftsmen, I would hope that as you learn your trade, you experiment along the way with it. Um, I'm watching uh, the kind of the, por the portrait artist of the year, kind of a, a painting thing on UK TV with it. And uh, I'm also watching in the same breath, uh, I think this draws off where it's life draw uh, drawing and they're awful. But the, por uh, the portrait artist of the year is, is phenomenal and it's like, two different ends of the spectrum in television you know one which is day a uh, daytime designed as a bit of fun and i'm sure it's going to inspire some people to pick up a pencil with it um but when you see some of the creativity and the artwork coming out of you know anybody the girl next door the the guy who's kind of giving up his job and kind of uh, looking for the kind of the end of career and they're just doing things for fun i totally believe that if you can bring more passion more fun into your everyday photography it will show. And I think that's where you start to actually then work on your own projects and everything else with it. And that's one of my plans for 2021 is, is kind of getting on back on track of doing my own thing. I've been really busy uh, uh, during all the, lock, uh, the lockdowns as a media cover at uh, the company, of course, trying to bring you training film every sing, uh, s single week. We've got thousands and thousands of bebs, of course, that were stuck at home like every, everybody. And even if I can just bring a little bit of creativity into somebody's life for five or 10 minutes, or an hour a week and things really, that's really what I'm here for. But uh, yeah, sorry, Brandon, I waffled on then. Mm -hmm. no, yeah, no. He said, uh -huh. <laughs> I love it. Go, go, go. Anything else? No more questions. No more questions. We're out of here. Thanks, thanks for joining us live. Remember, if you're not a member of the Photographer Academy, uh, jump, over, uh, jump over to our Facebook page, you know, like us, comment there, have a look at some of the photographs. Um, I think we should start to share some of the photographs actually on our Facebook page as well. We're not doing that yet, are we? You know? Okay, so let's start to do that from next week, please. Yes, yeah, so we can get them up live straight away and things. Um, but get over to the, face, the Facebook page. Have a little look and things, you know. Um, we got a little bit of a community on a Facebook group, but I'm not really involved with it. I do apologize. Um, but yeah, come over. Like-minded pe uh, people gather together. That's the fun thing. And if we can't meet as camera club enthusiasts together, then let's actually just exchange ideas online in a positive way instead of negativity. So I'm going to shut up. Mark Cleghorn, Photographer Academy, out. Cheers.